In today's video, I am going to be talking about the upgrades that I've done in the rear axle compartment of my 4106 GM bus. This is part of an ongoing uh, restoration for this bus, um, going from front to back, working on the mechanicals, and um, I've gotten to the back axle here, and I will review all of the things that I did. The first area that I want to address was the brakes. This bus came with a, the original single chamber air brakes. This model did not have the DD3s, so it was just a regular single chamber air brake. So the only parking brake was the hand brake, uh, the mechanical hand brake, sometimes called the Johnson bar. Uh, that is right next to the driver's seat on the left hand side. The driver would pull that bar and through mechanical linkages um, the brake would be applied to a brake drum that's located on the drive shaft. Now when the, if your bus gets converted from the original manual 4-speed to the Allison V730 automatic most of the time that mechanical brake is disconnected and that was the case with this bus. I'll take you in here and show you. The so factory original um, in here is where the parking brake would live. This was the housing for the slack adjuster this was a pivot for a linkage, a 90 degree linkage arm. The linkages went towards the engine uh, where there were some other linkages to turn everything around and send it back to the cab. The, this flange right here originally held the brake drum on the drive shaft and the brake shoes lived around this area here. When I got the bus, the brake shoes were actually um, still attached, just hanging below the differential. This mechanism was all still here, kind of hanging around, um, full of grease, just in the way. The brake drum was gone. Um, so I went ahead and cleaned up, got rid of all the rest of the linkage, all the abandoned parts, and, and just cleaned that up for my own peace of mind so that those couldn't get in the way, couldn't somehow rub on the drive shaft. So this is where the original brake mechanism lives on a 4106 back here. So that's missing and now what do you have for parking brakes on this bus? You would have nothing. Which is how the bus was when I got it. So what I did was I went ahead and installed a uh, spring brake. So there are um, a handful of videos um, on YouTube that talk about how to put on the spring brake. I actually got some help from John Matthews who has a great channel and he does some good videos on brakes, brake maintenance and, and so forth. So uh, shout out to John, he helped me out. So when you read up about installing spring brakes on a 4106, the biggest thing you're going to, uh, the biggest problem that you come across and, and people talk about is that a spring brake will not fit in the original mounting location. The original brake did live right here where this spring brake is, um, but this brake is much bigger, this can, and therefore there's not enough room between the bulkhead and the mounting bracket. Now this can here is called a 3030, which is probably the most common spring brake. What that means is that the spring brake portion, which is here in the back, is a size 30, and the service brake portion, which is here in the front, or maybe it's towards the back of the bus, I guess, uh, is also a thir size 30. So it's a 30-30 spring brake, again, kind of the most common size. So as you can see, it's a tight fit. Um, you have to figure out how much room you want to leave between the brake can and the bulkhead. I left about three quarters of an inch in there. That's just kind of a clearance thing. Um, theoretically, there's no way that your axle can go front to back uh, the axle just goes up and down. It does not ever twist 
Um, so there's really no way the can can hit the bulkhead. Uh, one of the problems with this installation is that you cannot cage the brake, which this bolt right here, which is just in a storage position right now, is meant to be used for by towing companies or if you need to move the bus in an emergency. You take this bolt out of the storage area right here. It goes inside of this spring area and it compresses the spring, therefore releasing the brake so the vehicle can be towed. With the spring brake in this position, there's no way that that bolt can fit in there. So that is a big concern. You really cannot cage this brake. So when it does come time, <clears throat> if it comes time to tow this vehicle, um, you've got to think about another way of releasing the brakes. So once you get your spring brake and you say, okay, well, what, what do I have to do to get this thing mounted? Well, the first thing you'll do is you'll remove the old service brake, which unbolts from a bracket that's similar to this bracket here, but it's mounted right about in this line. You unbolt that brake can and get rid of it. The next thing you need to do is you need to actually cut the, this suspension component here, which is a rectangular tube, and you cut it from the back to be even with the face of this plate because the round uh, shape of this spring brake extends into that tube. So this, this spring brake is whatever it is, eight inches in diameter. So you need to cut off uh, one wall of this rectangular tube. The tube is open on the, towards the front of the bus. You cut across, cut down, and cut over. Um, it is not a fun uh, cut. You got a weld here. Uh, this plate is actually welded on top of the tube, so you have a lamination there. You have a weld here where this um, oval member for the airbag is welded. Uh, so the cutting is not a fun chore at all. But you cut that off of there. The other problem is that below this area is where your jack pad is. So there's a thick pad that's welded to the bottom of this tube, and you actually slice about half of that away. Um, so that, that's not a great thing. Uh, but that's what has to be done. A lot of people have done it, and I have not read of any um, failure as a result of that. So now uh, you've got the, the tube cut away. So you now have your clearance for your brake. And the amount that you cut, again, is going to determine by how much room you leave here in the back. Um, you need to fabricate this angle bracket. Um, I made this out of plate. This plate here has three holes in it, two for the mounting bolts, studs I should say, that are welded to this can, and then a center clearance hole for the brake rod. Now this, this bracket, this angle bracket, cannot be welded to the bus, and the reason is because this can cannot be backed out of the holes. There's no room. So to remove this can, you actually have to remove these four bolts here, nuts I should say, one, two, three, four. You obviously remove the brake rod from the, the um, slack adjuster. And this whole mechanism comes out, side, out the side here. And then on the bench, you separate the angle bracket from the can by method of these two nuts. So that's how you go about removing the spring brake if you need to service it or replace it. Uh, replace it. You never want to service a, a spring brake. Um, so what you have to do is you have to provide these four bolts. So how do you do that? You really can't reach in the end of this tube. Your hand just can't fit in there. Um, and you probably would not want to just have a bolt head even if it had a washer. So what I did was, I inside of this tube, loose, I have a piece of plate that's about this size, it's a little smaller, that fits in there. The plate has the four bolts welded to it. And then these holes are drilled in the tube right here. So what you do is, 
And these bolts are about two inches long, so they slide into the end of the tube on the plate. I would call it like a bolt plate or a stud plate. You slide that into position and you pull it through. Um, then you just have to kind of keep it from falling back into the tube. Once you get the nuts started, it will draw tight. So now when you're tightening on these four nuts, instead of trying to pull the bolt head through the wall of the tubing and having point loading in these four areas where you might get some cracking, that load is spread out on a big plate. So that's what these four bolts are. They're actually effectively studs. So you do not need to hold the back sides of these with a wrench. You only need to tighten these four nuts on there. And I use nylock nuts. So that's, uh, that's what it takes in terms of fabrication. You need to fabricate a bracket and you need to fabricate the, the nut or the, the stud plate that goes in there. Put that in there. Again, the can has to be bolted onto the bracket first. Put the bracket in place. And yeah, it's a little bit of messing around. But once it's on here, and again, you need to get everything, uh, you need to figure your dimensions. This rod needs to be nice and level straight um, in its in its traveling position you don't want this rod tipping up or down you'll also don't want the rod at an angle um, in and out so you'd have to do a little bit of measuring on where your slack adjuster is to make sure that this rod stays nice and straight <coughs> um, so that's the mechanical part of the spring brake conversion the other thing that you need to do is you need to do some plumbing. And if you look in here, kind of see the plumbing that's going on. Um, I'm using the original service brake relay valve, which is right down here. There's your brake light switch right there. So the original service with the original um, hoses. And then what you have to add is what's called an anti-compounding valve, which is that valve up there, anti-compounding relay valve. That valve supplies the spring brakes. So the spring brakes are in the back and the service brakes are in the front. So you need to add that valve, plumb that in, and um, connect it to the bus mechanically. So it's really not that bad. Um, you are running just one uh, the, one of these yellow lines, plastic lines, runs up to the dashboard of the bus and that's what operates your push-pull valve. Um, and you can pull, you can get air from the front of the bus out of the auxiliary tank. So you're only running one of these um, 3 8 plastic lines from the front of the bus to the back of the bus. Really not that, not that difficult. So that takes care of the, um, the spring brake. Uh, upgrade that I did. Uh, the next thing that I worked on was the airbags. So the airbags go right in here. They're obviously not in place right now. Um, there are a lot of videos on airbag replacement. A pretty straightforward job. There are two bolts that are under here and then there's four bolts that go on this plate here. The problem on most buses, including the 4106, is that these uh, airbags are right in the line of fire from water and dirt from the rear tires. They live their life back here. And they are laminations, meaning you have two metal surfaces uh, bolted together and water uh, lives in there. <clears throat> so you'll see that when people take the airbags out, usually there's some serious rust going on. And the rust is not necessarily just on the airbag which you're replacing, but the rust can be on the um, frame-mounted plate. And in this case, that's what I had here. So if you look at this plate here, you can kind of see it from underneath. Those are new plates. All four plates I had to replace and the reason is that you get rust that grows between the frame and the plate. I have the three welds that are holding the new plate on there. Those plates were probably about a quarter of an inch 
separated from the frame because of the amount of rust that was growing between the frame member here and that plate. Uh, the plates were also worn, uh, rusted through in some spots. So the plates were in very bad condition and I didn't want to just leave those there. So what I did was I removed those plates, which was a fairly difficult operation. You get in here with a grinder and you grind those welds out. Um, the welds that I just showed you are typical outside and inside from the factory. So you have three stitch welds here and then underneath on the other side three stitch welds. They obviously put those welds on before they had the floor of the bus in place. Otherwise those welds to the inside are virtually inaccessible. So removing the plates requires um, a, an angle grinder, uh, maybe an air chisel, hammers, whatever, whatever you have in the shed, and it's uh, not a fun job. There's rust, there's dust, it's noisy. Uh, but you will eventually get those plates pulled off. And once the plates are pulled off, you can knock most of the rust down. Luckily, this, this is actually uh, a channel on the outside and the same channel on the inside. Luckily, these flanges on the bottom of the channel were still fairly intact. Some of them were actually deformed from the rust uh, lamination. But my channels were all in good shape. So this piece of the bus did not have to have any uh, major work done to it. Again, uh, John Matthews has a video of a major restoration that he did on one side of his bus, replacing this metal frame structure. A huge undertaking. So, um, you know, these plates are not as much of a problem because they're super thick. You do have rust on the top. You take a needle descaler or an air hammer and you knock the, knock the rust off the top. But these are nice and thick, so I don't know that I've ever seen problems um, with these. The problem is here where these plates are only an eighth of an inch thick. This formed channel framed section is also only about an eighth of an inch thick, I believe, maybe a little thicker. Um, and so you can have some problems there. Um, so I took all four of these plates off and made sure that there weren't any issues. On the other side where the uh, most of the weight is with the engine and the transmission, I did have a couple of cracks back there so I did weld those up. Uh, that sees, sees most of the, um, of the weight. So go over here and look at the airbags and the plates. So this is the plate that I made up. I made up um, eight, eight of these plates <clears throat> identical. The only difference between the, this one here and what gets welded on the bus is that this hole here, which is where the air fitting goes, um, for this stud here. Um, on the frame, this is notched out like that. So I cut that out. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but it's probably for the air line and just ease of assembly. And rather than not doing it and trying to figure out why, uh, why it was there, I just went ahead and did that. So I made up eight plates like this identical um, except I notched for the ones on the on the bus. So now how do you get this onto the frame? Well we go back over to here and uh, we can get at the three welds on the top which I kind of showed you up here. You can get a welder up in there no problem. That one over there. But underneath you're not going to get a welder back behind here. You just can't do it. So what I did was I welded an, an additional piece on the bench. I welded a plate vertically that was lined up on the back where it goes against this channel on the back side. And that way I had a vertical surface that I could get a welder to. Um, it's tight but when you have these hoses out of the middle here you can sit in here and you can get a MIG welder up in there. So this, these plates are welded three stitches to the outside and then on the inside on a vertical plate, that plate was maybe 
two inches tall and maybe six inches long, I was able to get some weld, good welds on there. Now, when you think about it, this plate really doesn't see much force um, trying to pull it off. All of the pressure is up. The airbags are pushing up. The axle does not have any movement on it in terms of frontwards, backwards, in or out. That's all taken care of by the radius rod. So assuming your radius rod bushings are good, your axle is going just up and down. So the plates are not really trying to get ripped, ripped off of there. So all four plates get put on. And now I have a good solid surface to um, bolt to. There's no lamination of rust between the plates and the frame. Um, everything can get nice and tight. I'll show you, this is the old airbag here. You can see here how bad this has actually still got some, some of the scale on it here. But you can see how much deformation there is. That's how much this plate had been bowed. That's a quarter of an inch. You know, and it's just, it's just gone, half of it. You get heavy scale like that. Um, and this, this is probably one of the better ones. So this is one of the old, old airbags. And you can see it's all, it's hard, it's worn out. This is the old bottom what the old bottoms look like. These are the new Goodyear's. Um, same bolt pattern. Um, instead of this aluminum disc, these have a plastic piece on them. The tops are the same, same bolt pattern. 